What are you doing, dude? Testing out this new ninja mask. What makes it a ninja mask? Because I have this ninja star. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. Today I have a couple of new things to talk about. Uh, the first thing I'd like to start off with are some bungees we got, and I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce this right. These got sent to us. Uh, Onji bungee, I believe is what it is. Onji? Onji bungee. It's probably Onji bungee, right? Yeah, that would make sense because it rhymes. <laughs> uh, these are something that were brought to my attention a, uh, about a couple of months ago, and just got sent the sample of these. It's kind of a fairly new product on the market, but I thought they were pretty interesting. So what they these are, I'm gonna rip that tag off real quick. So it's, a, it's basically like a big shock cord that you have, but it's wrapped. So it's almost like a, it looks almost like a kermanal construction, like on rope, but, it's, but it in, itself has some inherent flex to it as well. So it is very much like a shock cord, and then there's knotted ends at the end of this. And then these devices here are to adjust the thing. So basically what you do is just pop this out of the lock. I was doing it wrong. So you have to flex this way and then pop it out of the lock. So I'll show you that again. So I flex it, push it down into that locking, the locking teeth that are in there. And that's how you adjust the thing. So to release it, you pull again and then pop it out. So if I wanted to make it short, like this I could, and now I've got a bungee that's just that big. So I was interested in these things too is be, uh, because they've got some large eye hooks, um, and I thought they'd be perfect for like my roof rack for actually kind of ratcheting some stuff down. Um, oftentimes I'll just toss something on my roof rack for a short drive or put something on there to transport, and this, these would be kind of quick to do that, and I like that these have kind of a large hooked opening. I think that would work well for the little slats on my roof rack on my FJ. So I'm gonna kind of be looking at that usage, that type of usage for them. I know they come in multiple colors. Um, this is kind of like an OD color. There's a black here. And then um, it also says uh, it works well with rope too. So you can actually take the, the shock cord out of here and replace that with rope and use rope to do this too, uh, rather than the shock cord. I do think that the shock cord probably works, you know, as it was designed to do, because you can kind of stretch it and pop it into that lock that's there. So have to uh, have to work on kind of doing some some testing with rope on that too. So it also says that the hooks uh, can lock into tarp grommets really well. So that's a usage for them as well. Uh, it says it can be used with rope, like I was saying. So closed design for storage and a rugged one-piece composite design construction. So they are made in the U.S., which is great, too. Love promoting the U.S.-made products. So those are 1G bungees. You can check those out. We'll post a link in the description if you're interested in checking those out, too. And the next thing that got sent to us, the, uh, the designer of Fix-It Sticks, which I talked about, I believe, on the last gear tasting, the kind of adjustable torque wrenches for Precision Rifle, which those Fix-It Sticks were eventually developed for, or originally developed for the, the bicycle market, but they've kind of ported them over into long distance shooting stuff for torquing. Um, the, the designer of that came up with this weather neck system. So um, as a whole, it looks kind of like a mullet, which <laughs> I was kind of laughing at at first, but um, I do think this has got some, some really cool usage in it. And, you know, yes, rule number one is always looking cool, but at the other, on the other hand, um, so is staying warm too. So I think that this has got some, some innovative uh, things going for it. So before I put this on and kind of demo what it does, the, the actual neck protection here can kind of be flipped up. So you could still kind of make this into a beanie if you had that, that kind of flap in the back with the neck thing put up. And I have the face mask portion of this kind of stuffed into this little pocket that's in the back. So when you put it on like this, you look like you have a old man winter hat on or something like that. The, uh, the flap in the back, you can actually put a hand warmer back here too, so it can gonna kinda heat your neck up, which um, I'm actually gonna take this to, to Mammoth with me, that sniper challenge, and see what, how warm I stay kind of in it too. So what I like is that when you put this on, it's got magnets in the back. So you can see here in the back, 
it's got two magnets right where my fingers are, and those interact with that, and then it kind of pops onto and, and stays put. But what's nice about this is, is that you're not getting the hot air from your breath back on you to kind of fog up lenses or sunglasses and things like that, like a normal um, pullover type device would. I can't remember what the name of that is. What am I trying to think of? Balaclava or um, ski mask or something like that, depending on whether you're robbing a bank or not, right? Um, so you can also actually affix this even tighter. So if I put these both together on one magnet in the back, so it kind of squishes my face a little bit. It's a little bit too, too small for me. But these are just basically positional adjustments. And by coming back to the other magnet here, I can kind of make this looser and pull it down around my neck too for kind of like a neck gaiter. So that's a, an option with that as well. And then again, like I was saying, you can actually flip that up into the, into the beanie kind of configuration, you know, and just wear it like this too. So it's kind of like that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to really getting, getting some use out of it this winter. Um, the inside's kind of like a fleece lining. And right now there's a, there's a Kickstarter project for these. So I'm actually interested in kind of seeing how that does too. I believe the, the creator of these, Brian, who he spells his name wrong, but I won't give him any shit about that over gear tasting, which I guess I kind of did. But anyway, uh, you can check him out on Kickstarter. It's called the Weatherneck System, or you can go to weatherneck.com. These are made in the U.S., and it's kind of a vented hood design. Um, I am going to see if he's got anything on here. Of talking about details, I might have missed speaking about. One size fits most, um, only available in black. It's like Henry Ford. And the, they actually call it a mullet hat, too, so I guess I'm not too far off base with that. So active outdoors, overall performance. Mullet hat has steel tabs sewn into the back, which allow the magnets and the face shield to quickly attach. So that's what that piece is called in the front. It's called a face shield. Um, and ears very well. And the mesh prevents overheating. So, yeah, I'm looking at, uh, definitely looking forward to taking a look at the Weatherneck. All right, guys, so the next thing I wanted to highlight is a couple of things that I purchased. Um, one is the Unity Sarah mounts. So what these do is they allow something like these Peltor mounts. So these Peltor mounts are designed for a Peltor headset, whereas I have a sword and headset. So one of the problems is I can't take these and mount a pair of Peltors onto my helmet and use that. So originally with these Peltor, I think these are AR arc adapters, I think is what they're called. These just say Z3AD on the, on the back side of these, but I think they're called arc adapters. But, so they take a pair of existing you know, electronic ear pro and they remove the headband option and you're just basically left with two pieces like this that you know, if you're running comms, you'd still have the wire connecting the two sides, but it allows you to mount them onto a helmet. So by putting the little adapter here on uh, my Opscore helmet, I could mount my ear pro to the side here and then with these things too, you can flip them up so your ear pro flips up out of the way if you're not using it. So the only way to do that with Sordens is to come up uh, with something like Unity came up with, which is kind of a third party way of, of taking these stems like that off these, these Peltor arcs and putting on the Unity Ceramounts. And then those Ceramounts interact with the place where the Sorden comm set actually mounts to, or the headband actually mounts to each individual comms unit. So I'm going to experiment with that. There's a pretty good video description that someone put together, and I'll link to that too if you're, in case you're interested in it, but um, that's something that takes a little finagling. There's some, there's some definite modification there. You have to clip some things. You have to almost completely take apart the sordens. It doesn't seem too difficult, but there is some, some labor involved in, in getting that to work. But you need two things to do that. One is the Unity Sarah mounts, and then the other are these Peltor adapters. So I sourced, I believe I picked these up from TNVC, and then I bought these uh, Peltor things, which are harder to find than I thought they would be. Got these from Tidewater Tactical, so picked those up from there. So I'm looking forward to kind of doing that project to see what what kind of transpires and whether I like that option. I thought about also not tearing down my comms sordens because I, I like running them just like this too. Sometimes having comms on a pair of uh, electronic ear pro is a pain in the ass if you're just going to the range to plink or something like that, you know, and now you got this kind of comms jumble 
Um, you know, and I usually take a rigorous rubber band or something and clean all that up as, as best I can, but you've still got the, the mouthpiece lead or the comms that come down that you can kind of tie up, but um, I also considered picking up a second set of something to, to use for the range and not have to depend on these if I, if I take them apart. So I'm still kind of up in the air on what I'm going to do with that. I know that whatever I do, I'm going to pick up a second pair of some type of ear pro, whether it's like a cheap pair of Howard Lates or something like that. Um, but kind of the jury's a little still out a little bit on on that kind of stuff. Uh, but when you're mounting them to the helmet, um, you know you're obviously still a little limited by what you can do with them once they're in that configuration because it's not just. I guess you could go back to the the original configuration like this eventually with the head strap, but you certainly don't want to be doing that over and over again. It's you know obviously that amount of labor that it takes you to put those on is going to get added back in once you change them over too. And uh, I have a bunch of face paint inside of my helmet because of my friend Nick that decided to <laughs> wear uh, camo face paint like a, like a psychopath. All right, welcome to Questions Over Coffee. Before I actually get into the questions that we have prepared for you today, I would like to address something on our gear tasting coffee mugs because that seems to come up a few times when people are purchasing these on, they get these in the mail and they're like, hey, you know, that little G that's on gear tasting is a misprint. It's, it's actually a bite mark. I know that's a little hard to see, but you know, gear tasting, it's, you know, a bite mark taken out of the G. That's where we were going with that. So just thought I'd clear that up. All right, first question is from Gabe on Facebook. Brian, what do you think of these sports emergency tourniquets? Personally, I only use the uh, COT, triple C approved tourniquets like the Soft T, SWAT, and CAT, but I wanted your take on these. Um, I think the only tourniquets that um, the Committee on Tactical Combat Casualty Care, which is a COT, triple C, actually endorses are the Soft T and the CAT only. I don't think that they have anything on the SWAT T, but I do want to talk about the differences real quick. Uh, personally, the soft T is really the only one I rely on. Uh, we had, so these are our, excuse me, these are our EDC kits, our EDC trauma kits. So this was kind of our first generation of these things. Excuse me, too much coffee today. So what's in here is a SWAT T, a pack of combat gauze, and a pair of rolled gloves. And these are pretty thin, you can see, um, just overall, they're, it's a pretty, thin compact kit, you can put it into a back pocket. But the SWAT T, in my opinion, is more of a, a pressure dressing than it is a true tourniquet. Yes, can you occlude with the SWAT T? Absolutely, yes you can. But um, to me, so the SWAT T looks like this if you haven't seen one. Um, it's like a big gigantic rubber band. So it's got some nomenclature on here to where if you pull it, it turns into a certain shape and that's when it tells you that it's you know, stretched enough to do its job. So, you, you know, you can wrap this on your arm, so on and so forth. But, you know, in the, in the, the heat of the moment, if you're, if you're really bleeding out, um, and this is obviously my opinion, I'm not trying to, to knock this product, this is just, you know, my personal opinion on it, I worry about whether blood is going to interact with this and actually become slippery and things like that. Yes, you would still get that technically on a normal tourniquet too, but um, just in my opinion, it, it makes a great pressure dressing, that's for sure and I'm not knocking it for being a tourniquet, it does its job, uh, but I'm, I lean more towards the COT C approved tourniquets, which are you know, the CAT and the SWAT, uh, Soft T. So this is the Soft T wide from Technical Medical Solutions. Uh, we, we sell these in the ITS store along with our newly revamped EDC trauma kit. So what we did is we took the SWAT T out of the EDC trauma kit, uh, got some better packaging and made these super small to include a tourniquet. So our flat fold method that we've talked about before on ITS, if you've seen one of our videos on how to flat fold a soft T wide tourniquet to make it super small like that, um, you know, that's an option for making SWAT T smaller. And 
you know, in our kit, we've got a super compact package that still fits in your back pocket, but now it's got a full-size tourniquet in it, still that pair of gloves, and still a pack of combat gauze. So that's kind of what we went with. So just to kind of show you the evolution of, of where we stand with some of our products too, and, you know, why I recommend the, the SWAT T over some of the other things. So what you mean by sports emergency tourniquets, I think he posted a picture too. I think he posted it up on Facebook, but so it's kind of a... It's kind of like the new thing now. Everyone's getting into the tourniquet market because the, the medical community is kind of seeing the benefit uh, more so with tourniquets now and realizing that you're not going to lose an arm if you, you know, have to put a tourniquet on. Um, you know, obviously that depends on the nature of the wound too. But these sports emergency tourniquets are kind of coming around to the market. And honestly, I would stick with something proven like the, the CAT or the SWAT, the SWAT T, or, sorry, soft T. Um, or, you know, even the SWAT T, it just really depends on what you personally want to carry, but I would definitely push you into that direction too. And it sounds like you're already there, um, but that's just my take on the sports emergency tourniquets. Hey guys, thanks for watching Gear Tasting. Remember, if you have any questions, use the pound tag Gear Tasting on any social media network. We will find those questions and get them answered here on the show. And if you like what we're doing here on Gear Tasting, please consider joining as a crew leader on our website. Details are below. You can join the membership and allow us to give you back something in return. Thanks again.